isip. Paano nga ba mag-administer ng gamot? Interviews me. Inside the human body, roughly 37.2 trillion cells work energetically. 24 hours and 365 days, they are all working very hard. This is the inside of a human body. Intravenous Medication Administration the word intravenous literally means into the veins. With IV administration, a thin tube called IV catheter is inserted into the veins, which will then help the doctor or any health provider to give you the right amount of dosage without the needing of poking needles onto you each time. The IV route carries the greatest risk of any route of drug administration by administering directly into the systemic circulation through injections or infusion, it is immediately distributed to the site of action. The IV medication is often used because of the control it provides over usage. In some cases, patients may need medications quickly. This includes emergency situations such as heart attack, stroke, or even poisoning. We don't know the different types of intravenous insertion. First is the peripheral. The most common type of intravenous catheter is designed for peripheral access. This is the IV line commonly put in the hand or forearm when a patient is admitted to the hospital. It is short, approximately 1 inch long, and is inserted into the vein by a nurse. Peripheral IVs come in various sizes, ranging from 24 gauge or the smallest to 14 gauge the largest. The most common is the over the needle catheter. This is inserted into a vein via needle that has a plastic catheter around it. The needle is withdrawn, leaving the plastic catheter in the vein. The hub of the catheter is attached to an IV tubing or a protective cap is applied. The second type of peripheral IV catheter is a steel needle variation, often called a butterfly, due to the wing-like plastic tube at the base of the needle. These are always small gauges and used for infants, blood drone, and for smaller veins. Another type of IV catheter is called midline peripheral catheter, which is defined by as a catheter that is from 3 to 10 inch long and inserted by a trained nurse in the arm near inside of the elbow. This is threaded up inside the vein and with the tip not extending past the armpit or axilla. The chance of dislodging the IV access as compared to the peripheral ones are lower as the catheter is very soft and well embedded in the vein. This catheter is typically lasts for about 4 to 6 weeks. The tip of this catheter reaches a much larger vein causing less irritation. Peripherally Inserted Central Catheter A peripherally inserted central catheter or PICC is a flexible catheter that is put into the elbow vein much like the midline catheter. The difference is that this catheter is longer and guiding into the vena cava, which lead into the heart. For this reason, it is called a central catheter, meaning the fluid and the medication used in fuse go into the central circulation immediately. Central Venous Catheter Describe central venous catheters as those that are inserted by a physician through the vein in the neck, upper chest or anterior chest, with the tip in the vena cava of the heart. There are actually four types of central catheters. One is the PICC, while the other include a non-tunneled external catheter. A tunneled external catheter or an implanted port, the latter two catheters are surgically in place. Uh, for the advantages of performing an IV infusion, first one, it is reliable and fast. And second one, 
it allows a large doses to be delivered. And third one, it is easily monitored. So all the information that was provided in the wild we can say that IV is a medical procedure of necessity. But despite its advantages, it has its disadvantages. One disadvantage that we can refer to IV is that it causes the diseases of trophoblebitis and cellulitis. It can serve as a risk factor. Why? For trophoblebitis, we can refer that trophoblebitis is the inflammation of the blood vessel wall. It can therefore cause venous blood flow occlusion. Upon insertion of the IV catheter, it can therefore cause inflammation of the blood vessel wall and therefore decrease the blood flow. For cellulitis, cellulitis is caused by bacterial infection by Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. So, you can see, except when it's not performed properly, cellulitis can be Other disadvantages that we can infer to IV is that repeated injections of the IV itself is not feasible, meaning, hindi siya 100% successful. And other disadvantages that we can attribute to that is that it's expensive, it's less convenient and painful. And of course, for not done properly, technical assistance is required. IV infusions can be used for multiple reasons. First, it can be used to administer volume expanders. Second, to administer high dose medication in controlled amount over a period of time, also in case of emergencies that require immediate medication. Third, to infuse blood based products such as whole blood plasma, or platelet concentrates. Fourth, is to administer buffer solutions to correct acidosis or alkalosis. And fifth, is to provide nutrition to patients that are incapable of eating or digesting by normal process. So these are the materials that we'll be needing for the IV insertion. First, 500 ml of NSS, Micropore, Tourniquet, the IV tube, sterile hand gloves, the fanula, and then the alcohol pads. And now we go to the procedure. Disinfect the area that we will be puncturing using alcohol pads to prevent contamination. Apply tourniquet in the hands above the puncture site. Ask the patient to close his fist. Prepare the canola and inspect the device properly. Using dominant hand, align the needle with the vein. Draw the needle and advance the canola into the vein. Remove the needle and dispose it properly. Do 
clear the canola by putting micropore in it. Remove the tourniquet while applying pressure above the vein. Thank you.